All right, in this Tobacco University video, I'm going to go over how to select cannabis plant for cloning. And while individual growers or breeding styles may differ, I'm going to give you some general ideas or points to consider when you're going about selecting a cannabis plant for cloning. All right, let's get into this Tobacco University video. Well, first off, what should you be looking for? And different growers might have different targets, but you wanna be considering the morphology, how the plant actually looks, the timing, some of the genetics that that plant may have, and also the chemical profiles that it might be producing. So I'll talk about each of these in brief detail here. So first off, the morphology. Remember, this is referring to the plant structure. Be aware that this does not always hold true. This can be impacted by the environment the plants are growing in. If a plant gets more fertilizer than another, this could impact its morphology. It could cause it to stretch more, it could have to be more compact. So just, again, keep that in mind. And this is why documentation of how you grow and your growing procedure is very important. If you're only growing a few plants, this may make the selection process harder uh, to find that true standout that might have a very unique morphology. You know, is it very spacey? Is it more of a normal? Or is it very compact? Just things to consider there when we're looking at a plant's morphology. The timing. So when we're talking about timing, we can talk about the speed it takes for it to produce flowers. Some growers look for plants that produce pre-flowers quicker, looking for that quicker turnaround time. However, this needs to be balanced out with the size of the overall plant. Just because the plant grows very quickly and produces flowers, it might be shorter or stunted, might not produce as much overall. So that needs to be considered. Because if the plant's too small, again, those overall years, the total biomass might be reduced. Might make it great for maybe a small tent setup, but maybe not for large scale production. But also if the plant takes a long time to flower, this can reduce the chance of turning over more grow cycles in a year if you're growing indoors. So you have that consideration to make. Do you kind of have more grow cycles and turn over faster? Or do you grow a little bit longer and get more yield per grow cycle? So again, there's that balance there um, and things to consider when you look at the speed it takes that plant to flower. Then also the genetics. So if you get a genetic uh, test, you have a plant that may be an isolate, this can be used for cloning to allow further proliferation of those certain genetics, potentially also getting into the breeding and crossing of those genetics into other lineages. Uh, then there's multiple individuals that may be possible to produce pollen from the female plant, allowing for feminized seed production method to also be employed. And this channel has more information on that if you want to look at exactly how to produce feminized seed. But this is just another consideration uh, to make when you're considering, you know, what plants to go through and clone. Look at the genetics, maybe get a profile test that can be advantageous. Then we talk about the chemical profiles, just in general. So we look at the chemical profiles, similar to the genetic profile, but these can also be influenced by environmental factors. So be mindful that take this into consideration. Just because you test a plant one time for terpenes, you might get slightly different numbers if you test it again, if you change your fertilizer regimen. However, if there's a uniquely desirable chemical profile, such as cannabinoids and or terpenes, even if the plant's morphology is poor, it may be worth cloning to incorporate that into a breeding program. You get one genetic set to isolate the profiles and then breed that into a better plant that's better morphology, you're trying to get the best of both worlds. The goal would be to, to multiply um, plants from known quality chemical profiles and then breed them with other plants in hopes of altering the morphology while still maintaining the chemical profile. So again, this is where that breeding process does take time. Don't think you're just going to go through, breed it once, and you know get the end result. This is going to take some trial and error, uh, even on a large scale. The plant's age can impact the rooting. So younger plants typically have improved rooting over those older plants. So when given the option, you want to select the most youthful plant material to age in maximizing the potential success of your cuttings. Doesn't mean that the older plants cannot root, but we're looking at having that you know maximum rooting that quickest, best turnaround time, the younger the plant, the increased odds that you have of producing a vigorous root system. And then in the end, really what it comes down to is grower's choice. When it comes to selecting a plant for cloning, it comes down to what the grower determines to be desirable. It can be uh, a delicate and time-consuming process. So in short, the grower needs to justify this investment with hopes of producing a quality end product. See the person here, we see the flag at the far end. They just take a left or right to breathe this way or that way. There might be two different ways to get to that end goal, but ultimately it's that grower's decision. Here's an example of a whole bunch of plants. And for this grower, they determined this one was desirable and chopped all the other ones down. So this is why it's mindful or wise for growers to go through and have an idea what they're breeding for 
for, have an idea what they're looking, and to constantly make those selections based on that same plan so you're as efficient as you can with the entire process because even being efficient, it will still take time to get that high-end quality end result. And that's kind of part of the fun and interest with the cloning process and the genetic isolates when we're talking about cannabis or other plants in general.